Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo, and today we're going to look at a resource that you can use to find 3D models that you can use inside of augmented reality or virtual reality, and how to edit those without being a 3D modeler. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome back. Now, if you haven't checked it out already, Go to my website, learningdojo.ninja. You can see my blog with some other information and other tutorials. You can download templates and use those templates inside of Storyline and XAPI. You can also see my courses. I have courses on Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, HTML5, and I have a lot more in the works as well. If you've ever tried to build 3D experiences in tools like Zappar or Reality Composer from Apple or Adobe Arrow or anything like that, those tools give you some basic 3D shapes. They give you some basic 3D models as well that you can use, but it's not a lot. It's essentially just you know your basic shapes and then a couple different types of objects that you can use. So sometimes you need to find 3D models or create 3D models and uh, use those inside of your augmented reality. Now, if you wanted to create custom 3D models, you can use tools like Maya or Blender or something like that. But those tools are pretty complicated or you'd have to hire somebody that knows those tools to be able to bring those tools inside of your augmented reality experience, which is great. You can do that, especially if you're working with custom material or you can use something like Adobe Dimension. Now, if you go to my blog, you will see an introduction to Adobe Dimension where you can build some basic models and add some textures and other things like that. So check that out if you wanna learn how to do some basic shape editing, but there is a resource called sketchfab.com. Now Sketchfab is a great resource to find 3D models that you can use inside of Zappar or you can use inside of Reality Composer or Adobe Arrow. Now if I come over to Sketchfab, if I go to the Explore section, I can go to the Downloadable section. Not everything is downloadable. Some cost, some are free, but some are just for show. So you can go ahead and take a look at it, but you can't really download it even purchase it or anything like that. It's just to kind of show off. If I click on an object here, you can see the price if it does cost. You can also come over here and change the view on that model so you can see exactly what it's like. Some of it has animation, some of it doesn't have animation. It just depends on the model that you're going to be using. Now those animations, usually you can trigger inside of Reality Composer or Adobe Arrow or something like that. So if you wanted to and you have the budget, you can go ahead and purchase that. However, some of them are free, so you can actually find something that's free. And if you're looking for something specific, you can go ahead and type it in the 3D models up here, or you can go ahead and select the filters. I'm gonna select cars and vehicles here, and you can find a 3D model that works for you. Let's go ahead and download this sports car, and I think this one is free. And nope, that one is not. Let's go ahead and find something. That, this is the one I was looking for here. This one is free, I can tell because it has a download 3D model. Now I may also want to read the attribution, non-commercial as well. So go ahead and take a look at that. You may need to attribute the author as well. So it depends on uh, when the author uploaded it, what you need to do there. Now there's different types of file formats. So I have FBX, I have GLTF, and I have USDZ. Now the FBX you can use inside of like Unity and you can also take it and import it into Adobe Arrow and other things. Also the GTLF and then USDZ, this is the file format that Apple needs for either ARKit or Reality Composer if you're going to do it inside of Reality Composer there. I'm gonna go ahead and download this GLTF file. I'm gonna click on this download button and it's going to download the files that I need. Depending on what you download, they could be organized a little bit differently, but you can see right here this scene GTLF, I can see my license and then my scene bin as well. Take a look at that, take a look at the license, but let's go ahead and pull this up inside of Adobe Dimension. Now inside of Adobe Dimension, I'm gonna go ahead and click on create new, and then I'm going to drag this GTLF file into my Adobe Dimension project. Now it will take a second, but you may have to zoom out, which you can use your middle mouse on your mouse to uh, zoom out. I'm actually gonna use my move tool to move this more into the center here. So you can see this 3D model. If I select that 3D model over on the right hand side, I have a scene folder over here. 
This is essentially the group object. Now I can get down to different parts of that object if I come in and I select that folder and I continue to select the folders to open up more. So I'm going to select this other folder, this root node, this model, and continue on. Now, depending on how the modeler actually structured this, this may be pretty complex, but I'm going to get down to one that I can actually modify uh, until there we go right here. So I can see this mesh body one main. And then over on the bottom here, I can see the different properties for this mesh. And so it's like a certain part of the object. But over here is my action. So if I click on the select material, this allows me to adjust the base color of the material. It also allows me to adjust the opacity, the roughness, the metallicness as well. But I'm gonna come into this color and I'm actually going to select a blue color. Now just by selecting that one little object as I went in and I found that one object, I'm able to change the color on everything. Now I may want to find, you can see right here, I still have kind of this pinkish color as well. I may want to do some digging to find that, but for now I think this is great. I've adjusted that. Uh, if I drill down to like the spoiler here, for example, I can, uh, let's go back in there, and I think I can adjust that. Forgot exactly where, let me double click on it. Get my select tool. And you can see that just by, with the select tool, if I double click on different things to get to certain parts, uh, you can see that I can adjust that spoiler and I can have that move up and move down. So there are some different modifications that I can do. Let me just control Z until I can get back to normal here. There we go. So there are some adjustments that I can do to this 3D model to make some modifications without having to be a full on Maya developer or modeler or blender or anything like that. So this is a great tool. Adobe Dimension is a great tool to take some of those Sketchfab models that are already created and modify them to fit your need. Now, once I'm ready to have this be brought over to Adobe Aero, I can go ahead and click on this arrow icon. Oh, I have to select my object. I'm gonna come back up here to scene and then I'm going to click on this arrow icon and then click on export for arrow. It's going to give me a message here saying that this needs to uh, augmented reality. There's a file size as well that you may want to keep in mind, but I'm going to click on export and then I'm going to put this inside of my iCloud drive and then I'm going to call this car here. Now that's going to export out to my iCloud drive and then in my iCloud drive I can actually pull up my iPad and then bring that inside of Adobe Arrow. Now Adobe Arrow can be used on an iPad but it can also be used on a desktop device if you download the beta desktop version. Now I have my iPad pulled up here so I'm going to go ahead and start recording on my iPad and then I'm going to pull up Adobe Arrow and create a new project. And so over on the left hand side on the bottom is my create new. This will have me scan for a flat surface. And so it's going to take a second to find a flat surface and then tap on that flat surface. And ideally I wouldn't want my laptop right there, but that's, I don't have much room here to pull out with my microphone, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on plus down on the bottom left hand side. And then I'm going to click on files and it will pull up my iCloud drive. And you can see that my car, GLB file, that's what uh, Adobe Dimension will export out for Arrow, that is in my iCloud drive, so I can go ahead and tap on that. And depending on the size, it may take a little while, but there's my car, and I can go ahead and tap to place my car, but now I can rotate, I can adjust as well inside of a, Adobe Arrow, and then with that object selected, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that object, and then I can add behaviors. Now there's different types of triggers that I can add. So I can say, okay, as soon as the scene starts or as soon as somebody taps on it, let's go ahead and add an action and it's going to, let's have it move. And that is going to move. And we can say that it's going to move by a certain point. And there we go. So I'm able to come in here and I'm able to take content from Sketchfab. I'm able to download it, to modify it inside of Adobe Dimension, and then get it into Adobe Arrow. Now you can, from Sketchfab, actually download it and get it, get it into Zapbar or get it into Unity or get it into Apple Reality Composer. So, and then you can add triggers and uh, your experience there. So it's a great resource. I highly recommend you check it out. 
Also check out my website, learningdojo.ninja, and check out my blog and my additional courses if you're looking for storyline developments or Adobe Captivate XAPI and more courses to come on Adobe Arrow, Adobe Dimension, and other tools like that. Hopefully you found this useful and let me know in the comments if you have any questions and hopefully I see you in the next video.